Hello, everyone, and welcome to our professional development webinar. While we wait for everyone to join us in the live stream, please drop us a line. Be sure to tell us where you're from and say hello. So before we get started, let's take a moment to go over the format for today. Brittany and I will be sharing information with you about IFMA and about different training options, followed by a Q&A where we will answer your questions about those options after our presentation. For those of you on LinkedIn, Gail is working behind the scenes and she will be putting in information and answering your questions in real time. But again, Brittany and I will also be sharing those questions and answering them so that uh, those who don't see the questions who may have those same questions will get the answers. <laughs> So um, let's see here. Next thing is you do have a little bit of homework, but I promise it's not painful. First, please like the video that you're watching now. This helps us reach more facility professionals like you who can gain insight from this type of information. Also, as I mentioned before, please do put your questions in the chat box. Um, be sure to tell us where you're from. We like to know that information and we will be able to answer those. So Brittany. Thanks, Kim. So before we get into really the meat of what we're going to talk about today, which is IFMA's programs, we're going to introduce you to ourselves and to IFMA. So my name is Brittany Willoughby. I work in the sales department for professional development. And my job is really to work closely with both individuals and groups who are taking our courses. And so our team handles everything from beginning to end, consulting and signing you up for courses, making sure that you're ready all the way until you complete. So really, our team is the go-to team on everything professional development. Development. So IFMA is the International Facility Management Association, and I am actually in IFMA right now. In our SCOE, we call it our Service Center of Excellence. Yeah, it's a very exciting feeling. A little weird because I'm sure, similar to many of you, it's been a really long time since we've all been in the office, but it's exciting to be back. Um, so IFMA actually turned 40 years old last year, so we are the most trusted and experienced facility management association, and really what we're what we want to do is advance facility management as a whole. We do that in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the ways which we'll talk about today is training, education, and professional development. But we also offer some networking benefits to our members as well as resources for staying up to date on current trends. So being, in, being successful in facility management or FM means that you need essential skills. And a lot of it, because the world of FM continues to change and evolve and develop, you need to stay on top of that. And so how do you do that? Well, you do that by training and knowledge, um, filling in some gaps, upskilling, all of that. You need to focus on making an impact in your organization because you do, FMs touch everything within the facility and that impacts how that facility is used and the success of it. Also, you need a confidence in your expertise, which as we'll show you, that will be verified through professional credentials. How do we know what to share with you in our training and development? It's not something that Brittany and I are sitting in a basement, which in Houston, we don't have basements, but you get the picture. Um, that's not us coming up with it. That's facility managers or you letting us know what it is that you're doing. And we do that through a global job task analysis. That has identified 11 core areas of facility management that you need to be familiar with, be an expert in, in order to do your job effectively. So this is done every five to seven years, um, and it provides the basis of, F of IFMA's FM body of knowledge. And this is global. This is not mm -hmm. limited to one area, right? Brittany, we're not all US, even though Brittany and I are Texans. We've got FMs from Brussels, from Australia, from New Zealand, from everywhere, Asia Pacific. Everybody, we bring it up to a global standard because we need everybody to be safe and have efficiently operating facilities. Exactly. That's a question I actually get a lot is, oh, I'm in Canada, so I'm sure, you know, they see that we're based in the U.S. and they, they think, oh, I'm sure that that doesn't apply to me. Um, and so that's absolutely not correct. It adheres to a global standard, just like Kim said. 
So what we did is we took those 11 competencies that were resulting from that global job task analysis, and that is the basis of our educational courses. And so what we want to do is guide you along your educational journey. We are not one size fits all by any means. So we have something for everyone, whether you are just starting out in the industry or you are maybe moving into a management role or trying something new. So this is kind of a good representation. We're going to give you, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what we offer, who they're for and what they are, and then we'll take a deeper dive into each of them. So the first one we'll start with is the essentials course. This um, is not a credential. It's not a certification. This is, serves as an introduction to facility management. Um, and I actually took this course when I started with IFMA a couple years ago. I didn't know anything about facility management, and this is a really, really great introduction to the verbiage that facility managers use and just really gave me a better understanding of what to expect from the industry. So this is going to be for someone who is transitioning into facility management, maybe from another role or works in a role that is uh, adjacent to facility management. And what I mean by that is maybe you're an FM services company and you have a coordinator that works closely with facility managers, but isn't a facility manager themselves. This would be great for them. The second one is the FMP, Facility Management Professional. This is a certificate program similarly to the SFP. And this is going to be for facility managers who have a good base of knowledge. You know, maybe you've been in the industry for a year or two, but you're looking for something to push you to that next level. Maybe you are have you have professional development as part of your, your goals, um, part of your employee review. So this is going to take the four, the top four areas, which we'll tell you about in a little bit, that were deemed the the most essential out of those 11 and give you a deeper dive into those four areas. The SFP is a sustainability credential um, and that's for those who similarly to the FMP have a solid base in facility management knowledge but are looking to take a deeper dive into sustainable thinking. And then the last one we have is the certified facility manager. This is a certification so there are certain recertification requirements but this is um, I call it our creme de la creme credential and this is for facility managers who are experienced you want to have you know five or so maybe a little bit more years under your belt maybe you're a higher level uh, manager or you're looking over multiple facilities that's who this the CFM is going to be best for and, and you, just, do, you do have to meet the eligibility requirements. That's yes. that's one thing. That's why where the five years of experience comes into play because mm -hmm. it's your experience that's being tested, not book knowledge that you're going to be reading to take a test. Absolutely. And this, another thing to note too, our courses are globally recognized and accredited. And so what that accreditation does is it just brings in, it's a third party that comes in and reviews our courses just to make sure that we are delivering the information in a cohesive way over across the board. So that just gives extra, extra confidence in both the credential and the credential holder. I thought you were going to say something, Kim. I, I actually, I was thinking, I was thinking that um, there's learning objectives and it's very clearly stated, but the question comes, does the material actually teach you what those learning objectives are? And that's what ANSI accreditation is part of what they're checking. They also want to make sure that it's fair and consistent and that it just adheres to the highest standards. Mm -hmm. So when you come to our association, you can feel, you can know and trust in our materials and our process and our credentials just as you would if you were going to a, a college and understanding that the information there, you know that you're going to be learning what they say you're going to learn. That's that high standard that we apply here. So always, I would recommend if, if you're looking at different training options, do look to see if there's accreditation in, included with that. And this, so just a, just a note before we move on to the next slide, this is by no means meant to tell you you have to start with essentials and then go to FMP and then SFP and then CFM. This is just kind of showing that that path and those levels of who this is for. So really, if you're if you're a facility manager and you've been in the industry for 10 years and you're looking for a credential, CFM is going to be best for you. I would not recommend you start with essentials because you've already got that base of knowledge. So this is just kind of a guide to help you figure out where you fall in that path. <laughs> 
And I think as we go along the presentation, you'll see that IFMA is dedicated to providing training for the training that you need versus you having to fit your training needs to what we offer. We're really dedicated to advancing the profession. And one way that we do that is through our training and development options. Um, here's our deeper dive into essentials of facility management. Like Brittany was saying, if you're somewhere adjacent to this, we've seen a lot of interest, especially since COVID. COVID has pushed facility management into the limelight. Um, used to be if everything was running smoothly in a facility, those people probably never knew who a facility manager was, much less, you know, if that was Dan or Erica. I mean, they just wouldn't know. They wouldn't have a reason to. Now it's very important and it is seen as a critical element, an essential element of that organization. And so people want to understand, okay, what is facility management? So if you're just coming into this, or if you have members on your team, maybe technicians that you feel like would be a good fit for this, essentials will give them just that. It is essentials. It's 10 different modules. There's three different areas, focus areas for it. So there's an introduction. You can have one module or you could do all 10. It just depends on what your specific needs are. Focus area two has operations and maintenance, and then focus area three is workplace management. There is a, certi a certificate of completion or verification. It is not a credential. And this is something that with each module, that makes it really easy to go through and you complete one module at a time. So this can be done with a full-time job and being able to add to that knowledge. Here's the pricing on the essentials. As you can see, you can choose to bundle it. So if you know that you want to go through all 10 modules, it definitely is um, more economical to do that, to purchase them all at once. But if there are specific ones, if, if you're just interested in that first focus area, then each module can be purchased individually. And uh, it's very easy to see that. And at the end of the presentation, we'll give you some helpful links. Um, we've got a great course catalog. It's very easy to navigate to and to be able to find this information. So the next one we're going to talk about is the FMP, Facility Management Prof Professional. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this, those four areas that I mentioned earlier, these are the areas that it's going to take a deeper dive into. Project management, leadership and strategy, finance and business, and operations and maintenance. So when you enroll in this course, um, what this is, is it's an online course that you can take self-study and it comes with everything you need to complete the course. There's online study tools, there are flashcards, there are pre-quizzes, um, and then once you get to the end, you'll need to complete each of the final assessments associated with those four modules. And that's how you get your credential. Um, one thing I want to note is this is a lifetime credential. So once you have it, it doesn't expire. The, there's no re-credentialing, anything like that. No continuing education. Um, and nobody can take it away from you. Once you have it, it is yours for life. You can upgrade and have optional printed materials shipped to you. I know a lot of times people really prefer to touch and feel and highlight and bunny ear and take notes. So you do have that option. There's also a digital flipbook included with your online access. And then once you do complete all those four assessments, You'll have to submit your credential application and there is a fee associated with that. We'll, we'll tell you a little bit more about that as well. So this is the pricing. It's similarly to similarly to the essentials course. It, there is a discount if you bundle it all together. Um, and really, I would say if you're going to pick one or two of these, go big or go home, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take home the credential. Honestly, you get a certificate of completion for each of the individual modules, but in order to get that credential, you have to complete all four. So why not? If you're going to do two, just go ahead and do four. Um, you do, when you submit that application, the fee is 140 for members and then 250 for non-members. You can pay that up front or you can do it at the end when you submit your application. Either is fine. And I will say too, before we leave this screen, I didn't mention it, but if you notice in blue, it says view the GSA schedule. If my is on the GSA schedule. So we have pricing for our government agency friends that uh, it does give you pricing and we've gone through the process. So we are again, approved to work with governmental agencies at the federal level. Yeah, we also offer group corporate rates too. So if mm. you are here and you have a team of two or more people that you're looking to put through these programs, contact us. We'll have the contact information at the end, but reach out to us or 
pop something into the chat and someone will reach out to you personally um, and we can discuss those options for you. Yep. So this is, this has a, uh, this is, I think, our sweet spot. Um, what we've been talking about is building a foundation, right? It's learning. The FMP has those four critical areas, which everybody really needs to be strong in. The next expectation, for me, this is no longer a specialty credential. I think that's that's been some uh, in the years that we've been offering this. Sometimes that's the perception is, oh, that would be somebody who's specializing in sustainability. Y'all, that's not the case. This really is continuing the foundational basis for being an excellent facility manager. It's the sustainability facility professional. We've, I've heard one of our instructors say, we don't teach you what to think, we teach you how to think. So that no matter what facility you're in, you'll be able to maximize the use of the resources, you'll be able to save money for the organization, you're going to think sustainably, and you're going to be able to have strategies that you can apply. Just like the FMP, it's everything's included in this program. There's three different focus areas, starts from strategy and alignment, to managing, to operating. So it's, it's all inclusive, and it really takes that deep dive into having the sustainable facility. You don't have to be lead qualified or lead certified for a facility to be run operationally efficient with sustainable practices. Um, again, it is a lifelong credential and the price here, it is not by module like the FMP. Those are all four standalone competencies. What we're looking at here is a full program to get you that deeper dive into knowing how to strategize, manage, and operate those facilities. It's a globally recognized credential. It is a lifelong credential, and it, um, it can really change the way that you look at facilities. So I urge you to take a look at this if you've got that strong foundation in facility management. So the last credential that we're going to talk about is the Certified Facility Manager. And I want you guys to differ differentiate in your minds two major things. The FMP and SFP are their credentials and they come with a certificate of completion. The major difference is those are knowledge based. So we're giving you the materials to study and learn. And by getting that credential, that shows that you've mastered those concepts. The Certified Facility Manager certification is a proctored exam, it's 180 multiple choice questions, and when you walk away from that having this certification, it shows that you are competent in all those 11 core competency areas as it pertains to facility management. This is, this is one that doesn't have any prerequisites as far as materials that you have to go over or study, but there are eligibility requirements to sit for the exam. Um, and so the reason for that, you'll see on the bottom left, there's three years of experience with a degree in facility management um, or five years without. And the reason for that is because you're going to be asked questions that are situational. They're, they're going to be it, it's, it's a question and it's got four multiple answers that could all work, but you have to use what you know as a facility manager and the knowledge that you've gained over the years of your experience to be able to look at that question and pick out which answer is going to be absolute best. So again, this one is globally recognized and they are, the test is proctored in a testing center. Um, we use Prometrics and there are locations all over the world. We'll teach you how to find those on the next slide. But they have launched a new remote proctoring option, which is very exciting just because a lot of things have gone remote now. So it's nice that this is one of the certifications that has been deemed essential. So they came up with that option. Um, we do have optional preparation resources. So we offer a CFM prep exam that is a practice exam. It's previous, you know, older questions. It just helps you prepare for what to expect out of the exam. There are also workshops that IFMA offers, and then we offer individual competency courses. So if you need a review over some of those competencies that we talked about earlier on, those are, that's a good resource for you as well. This one is also one that requires recertification. So there are certain requirements you have to stay up to date on current trends, and that's pretty typical of any certification that you see if you're certified in any field uh, there you you need to maintain current knowledge and be, stay up to date with trends 
So these are the costs associated with the application. This is the application and exam fee. So it's five fifty for members, eight fifty for non-members, and then that's also on the GSA pricing schedule as well. So there is GSA pricing for that. And what this process does is it just ensures that you meet those eligibility requirements. I would say be sure that you are ready to sit for the exam before you submit this application. There is a, a, a time limit to when you have to schedule your exam after you submit this application and you just want to be sure that you are fully prepared to sit. So this is some information about the testing centers. This is a link that can help you find that testing center and schedule it. They are all over the world and I have had I've had a couple people ask me and it's been some some pretty remote locations and surprisingly enough they have had some testing centers that can accommodate so it shouldn't be a problem finding one. So if must competency courses, <clears throat> excuse me, Brittany had mentioned when you're looking at the CFM if you need to maybe cover some gaps in knowledge that this could be a resource. This is also a great resource just continuing the the thought that IFMA has training available to you for training for your training needs at that time versus you having to accommodate just the training that we offer. So what we've done is the FMP covers those four critical areas of facility management, there's seven others that are not included in there. And so it's we've created these new individual courses where it is, uh, again, you've got quizzes and then a final assessment. You will earn uh, CEUs, continuing education units, as well as a certificate of completion. This can be a preparatory tool for sitting for your CFM exam, if you just need a little bit of confidence that you do have that knowledge in these specific areas. Also, if you're looking at potentially changing your current role in your current organization and applying for uh, a position that's been posted internally, or if you're looking to grow and change your career and go into another position with another company, there may be some requirements on that job description that you haven't been exposed to. This is a great way to gain that extra, that extra knowledge and that extra learning. Um, one of the things that you'll get that shows that knowledge and learning is a digital badge. And we're going to be talking about what those digital badges are are here in a moment, but these are these are um, areas that are not quite as content intense as the four modules for the FMP, so they can be achieved within 5 to 15 hours. So for those of you who you're already balancing a full-time job and a family and, you know, having a personal life, this will still fit in with that and allow you to grow and um, achieve new professional goals, but not having to sacrifice a ton of time in order to do that. So, and as we get into what these competency courses are, if it was a little bit too small to see that on those wheels, it's operations and maintenance. Um, actually, these are the four that are for FMP. So this gives you those learning objectives, operations and maintenance, project management, leadership and strategy and finance and business. We indicate that by the FMP next to each one of those. Uh, on our uh, course catalog, you can go a little bit deeper into what those areas are and even look at a table of content. As we start getting into the additional seven core competencies, we've got performance and quality, information and technology, which was recently added back in um, on our last global job task analysis, as was sustainability. Things continue to change and evolve within this profession. Um, communications, very important. Sustainability. I want to pause on that one, uh, Brittany, because there could be some confusion. Okay, you have a sustainability standalone course, but you've got your SFP, and what's the difference? Sustainability, this is an overview of the concepts within sustainability for facilities. Everything that we're offering, when you see project management, it's not just general project management. It's project management of projects that you would find that you're going to be faced with within a facility as a facility professional. So this gives you insight into the concepts. If you um, purchase the sustainability standalone course that you see here and you say okay that gives me a taste I want to really go further into this you will get whatever um, amount that you paid for the sustainability as a credit toward your SFP so I don't want you to, to think that you're gonna have to pay all over again 
we want to encourage you to please look at sustainability, go deeper into it, start applying those concepts to your facility by getting your SFP. So it, there are steps and the investment you make with that standalone course will go toward the cost of purchasing the SFP program. And then rounding it out, the last three, real estate, occupancy and human factors, which is very interesting, and risk management, which is also something that we all have to be aware of within facilities. I love that you said that one's very interesting because I was sitting here thinking, as I'm one of the few people in our office, because we're not back at full capacity yet, um, I'm thinking about you know all the other companies that are in this position right now, slowly bringing people back into the office and how that's going to affect the facilities teams and what they're going to have to think about and the logistics. And you know, it's a big difference taking care of an empty building than it is a building that's completely occupied. And so I feel like this last one, Occupancy and Human Factors, is really going to be a great tool for facility managers right now and in the coming months as we're seeing things transition, as we're seeing people transition back into their workplace or as we're developing these hybrid work models, you know, partly from home, partly in the office. So that would be a great one to kind of explore right now. Absolutely. So here's the pricing for the individual courses. As you've noticed, we do offer them if I'm a member and non-member. I will do a shameless plug right now. Join IFMA if you're not a member. <laughs> we have fantastic information. We have resources that you don't have to pay additional fees for. We have a knowledge library. Brittany was talking about hybrid workforce. There's a lot of content out there. If, my, if it's in the knowledge library, it's been vetted by subject matter experts. So it's credible, it's relevant, and it's, it's great information at your fingertips. This again gives you, um, by taking a course like this, you take a final assessment to show that you comprehended and learned what those learning objectives were, and then you get the certificate of completion as well as a digital badge. The member, non-member pricing really is because for our members, we want to recognize um, and and give you the best price possible. Non-members, we want you guys, yes, you don't have to be a member to do any of this. To have a credential, you do not have to be an IFMA member, but your pricing will be better. So please come on board as a member. Yeah, and especially if you guys are looking at the FMP, really the FMP, SFP or CFM, I don't know if you noticed, but the pricing difference between member and non-member, if you get a membership and you get that member rate, it pays for itself. So really, absolutely take advantage of it, especially that first year and take, take full advantage of, of what's available to you. So IFMA has a couple different learning models. Um, we know that not everyone is self-disciplined and can sit and work through their courses and get them done. So we have a couple different options. The first is that self-study. So that would be Brittany Willoughby going online. I need some training and development for, for professional, for facility management. So I go on, I enroll in this course, and I work through it at my own pace. I set myself some time aside every week, an hour, two hours, that's my dedicated study time, and I'm going to work through this FMP and get it done. Um, if that, if you need a little bit more accountability than that, we have the virtual FMP option. So what that is, it's 90 minutes one time a week, and it's typically associated one one per chapter. Sometimes they kind of blend over, but it's meant to be a high level overview of the main concepts. And so you'll get live interaction with an instructor. You can ask questions, you can interact with other students that are studying the same thing. And it also encourages you to, well, it makes you, <laughs> it makes you work through the material a little quicker because the weight is still on your shoulders as the student. You do have to read the material before coming to class to be prepared because this is not meant to teach you anything and everything that you need to know to get the FMP. This is meant to serve as like supplemental learning in addition to the self-study. So you will have to do a lot of the reading and heavy lifting and studying, but it's it's been, we've got a really, really got a lot of good feedback about, you know, it helped me work through it. It set that time once a week. And so it holds you accountable to work through that material. And then it's a great time to ask questions as well. The other option would be classroom. We are seeing this option slowly come back, which is very exciting. So this is, the time is different for every course, but it will be all day in a classroom learning all of the concepts. And so if you are someone who learns better by hearing and seeing and interacting, then that would be a really great way for you to learn. 
I would like to say that some of the, the virtual offerings or classroom offerings, um, we do list those out in our catalog. So you can see we, we have different training affiliates just globally. And um, within the States, for example, we do partner with colleges and universities. They have professional education, professional continuing education areas, and they love our program because, again, it is accredited and it helps the professionals to be able to take it. Sometimes it's better if you can take it through your local university, especially when they do start having in-person classes again, that would be a great option if that's the way that you learn best. Again, none of us all learn the same way, and these are just some different options for you to look at. But I will say this, please don't shortcut your learning. It is worthwhile investment in yourself to read the material, learn the material, because as you're reading and learning, you'll be able to turn right around and apply that to your daily role within your facility. And it just makes sense. Um, there's a reason why you may be interested in training and development. It's so that you can potentially earn more. You may be looking at the slide. We're going to go into some more of that later on, what's in it for me. And it, it just makes sense. But don't shortcut yourself. Don't look for how can I get through this faster. Look at how can I learn this and really internalize it and be able to improve um, what I do and to be able to grow my career professionally. That's the purpose. Speaking of don't shortcut yourself, <laughs> guys, these are, yeah, these are some very information heavy courses. So they are by no means something that you can just skate through and skim and take the test and pass. Absolutely not. It will take hard work and dedication and study time, but we promise it's worth it once you have that credential. So this is just a little outline of what to expect from each of those courses. So the essentials was 10 modules and it's two to four hours per module. You do have six months to, to complete the course. And then the FMP you'll see there each of those four individual modules is about 10 to 12 hours. Again, it's going to vary a little bit just depending on how proficient you are in each of those areas. Some people might soak up information a little quicker than others. I will say I've heard a lot about project management. I hear project management is a doozy. So if you sign up for the FMP and you take the project management course and you're finding it a little difficult, just know you are not alone. The SFP, again, very, very information heavy. These are these modules are 20 to 23 hours per those three areas. So you're looking at a total of 60 to 70 study hours. We have resources. Um, we have done a study guide for the FMP, and I believe we're working on one for the SFP as well, just to help you allot your time, because that's going to be, I would say, the biggest key to success in this is dedicate the time to it. I actually spoke to someone last week who did that for the essentials class. He said, I gave myself one hour every week because he had a deadline that he was working on that he needed to have it completed by and it worked. And so I shared with him the FMP um, and I said, we've already done all the hard work for you. We've already figured out the schedule. So we have actually a schedule to put you at finishing in four months, eight months and 12 months, depending on you know what your schedule allows. But I would say that is gonna be the biggest tip for success. And then the last one, I know that's a really big range to say five to 15 hours per competency. You can find the CEUs and the hours that it will take in our course catalog. Um, and so you're looking at about 75 to 100 hours of optional study time to prepare for that CFM exam. Again, remember, all of the preparatory tools are optional. The only thing that is required is the work experience and education. So this is when you're done and you've got your credential and you're celebrating and you're so excited and you wanna share with people what you've done and what you've gotten, this is where the digital badges come in. So once you complete, you're not only included in our uh, global registry, our online registry for credential holders, you can add the credential to your name and then you also receive a digital badge and you get one for the credentials that you see here, you also get one for each of those individual core competency courses. So upon completion, you get these digital badges. They are web enabled and you can put them in your LinkedIn. You can put them in your email signature on your social media. And what it does is let's say someone is looking at it. They see this little FMP and they don't quite know what it is. They can click on it. And this is what it takes them to. It'll give them a brief a brief description of what you learned and what you have mastered by getting this credential and the skills that you have gained and the knowledge areas that you mastered through this. 
So yeah, really, it's just a way to, sorry, it's just a way to, <laughs> to toot your horn. I mean, we just went over the, the time commitment. And so these are, these are difficult. They, they take a lot of time and a lot of dedication. And so we want you guys to show that off. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it, it's easy to put on a resume that you have this background or this knowledge or these skills and anybody can say anything. You know, there's that joke about the internet. Um, he's, you know, the, he's French. Bonjour. Obviously, I'm not French. I could say I'm French, but how do you prove it? This is a way to have that verification that, yes, mm -hmm. if you're saying you're an FMP, which we do have, you know, a registry, employers do check the registry. Um, you have a unique certificate number. It's very clear. There have been times where somebody, you know, see somebody else's and they they fudge it. It's, it's not, not real. And they're found out pretty quickly. But this is like immediate verification. And it is very important in this digital age to show that I have this knowledge. And this is where we're really ex excited. And this is, IFMA continues to reinvest back in its professional development, in the training. We are, our, our whole purpose for being here is to advance facility management. So everything goes back into that. And this is just one of those things that we've added that enables you to show the, the strength of your knowledge and expertise. Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh -huh. okay. This is one of my favorites. I always get excited for this one because we all want to know what's in it for us. If you're if you're presenting this training and this education and, and your boss comes to you and on your employee review says you need to invest in some kind of professional development. OK, well, that's cool and all. But what's in it for me? So there was, this is not us tooting our own horn. I could do that all day, but it's not. This is, these are statistics from a research report. So uh, average $6,000 salary increase within the first year of having an IFMA credential, not guaranteeing it, not speaking for your employer, nothing like that. But I have heard straight from the horse's mouth that in a couple of people that I have spoken to that they were promised promotions pending them getting a credential and employers are looking for this. I've heard, I've had people call me saying, Hey, I'm going to apply for this job, but it says FMP or CFM preferred. What does that mean? And so I walk them through that. So employers are looking for these credentials. They, they are recognizing these credentials. So these are highly sought after. Absolutely. And there's something that having those letters after your name, um, again, this is straight from people that have gone through our programs because we're really connected and we want your success to be there. We want you to achieve your FMP or SFP or CFM and they gain confidence. They're sitting, a lot of times FMs are sitting around the table with people that have a lot of really high level degrees and being able to show that they are that subject expert for the facility and they can speak about the maintenance and operation and, and just the strategy of how to run this building effectively. Having a credential gives you that confidence. And by going through the FMP and the SFP, you have that knowledge-based data-driven method that will drive your decisions and your strategy. So as you're influencing or leading your organization and in details that relate to your facility, you will have that in your wheelhouse and be able to utilize it and be very effective. Okay, yep. We know it's really great for you, but a lot of times we do get asked, well, what's in it for your employer? This is that, that research study that Brittany had mentioned. There was a survey of, okay, what do you find as an employer? How does this help you? The thing that really is interesting to me is, is the last one that's listed there. The average IFMA credential results in a 40% increase in employee performance. Um, just picture being that much more effective in your role and it being recognized and the impact that you'll have in your organization and, and having employers recognize that is critical. Again, the profession is growing. The importance of the profession is growing throughout COVID. FMs were considered essential employees and you are, you perform an essential role and you're critical to an organization's success and the employers are seeing that and recognizing it. 
So this is, I know we mentioned a lot throughout. If you have questions, if you need anything, reach out to us. We mean that, guys. We we really, really mean that. Reach out to us with any questions, whether it's you as an individual, if it's for your team, if you have questions about group training, reach out to that email, corporateconnections at ifma.org. There are eight to 10, I can't keep track of how many people we have on our team now, eight to 10 different eyes that keep uh, keep a, a lookout for, for emails in this address. So reach out, someone will, will reach out to you and answer your questions. There are also some helpful links here. You'll find our website, information about the programs. And then the third one, which I wanna, I wanna talk about for just a second is the convince your boss flyer. So if you are part of a company who encourages professional development, which we love to see and part of the incentive is they will either pay for it or reimburse you or you're looking to to convince your employer to convince your boss to pay for it this is a flyer that you can use and it outlines a couple of the different talks about roi and and really from the perspective of what's in it for your employer all those things that we just previously talked about what they can gain from it this highlights it in a nice pdf that you can hand out so feel free to take advantage of that as well. And then you can read more about the continuing education units. You can find questions or find information about all the courses throughout the course catalog. And you can also see what courses we have coming up through our partners. So if you are someone who wants to explore either virtual or in-person instruction, that would be the place to go. And then some exciting, exciting news <laughs> for those of you that have hung through with us, not going to leave you empty handed. So if you are interested in signing up for any of our courses, um, take advantage of this over the next two weeks because it's only through the end of this month. But the first code will save you $100 off either the FMP or the SFP. And then the second code will save you $50 off the essentials. So that introduction course or one of the core competency courses. And I believe, yeah, I'm going to just leave that up. So if you guys need to jot down that code, you can. But I believe we are at the end of our slides. And I think we're going to look and see if we have some questions. Yeah. So one question that I see, Brittany, is from Erin O'Loughlin. And Erin, you actually have a couple of questions. There's one where you're asking about um, the European qualifications. I need to double check on that. I don't want to speak or give you um, incorrect information. We have your question and we will definitely reach out to you with some more information or details about that. The second question that you have about how does, um, here's the question, would there be a reason to take an SFP course as opposed to an international diploma in environmental health and safety? There's going to be reasons to do either or or both. What I can speak to for the SFP is this is specifically relating to facilities. It is, it's not the general, which you may get, get different things in the environmental health and safety. What the SFP is going to help you with is look at strategy for facilities, operating a sustainable facility and managing um, a sustainable facility teaches you how to think sustainably in all of the areas that it takes within managing a facility. So that is going to be different from the environmental health and safety. Personally, I would say if you can do both, because I think both will probably add to your knowledge um, in a meaningful way. But I know sometimes you have to pick and choose. I would just say, what is your role within your organization? What are some of the key performance indicators or, or the balance scorecard strategy that your company has? How can you help them meet those the best? And then um, we can also, if you'd like, we can send you the table of contents for the SFP. So it really covers at a more granular level what's going to be taught in that course and what you can expect to leave once you've obtained your SFP. What does that really mean? Uh, and I think that that would be helpful for you. Brittany, anything to add to that? You did it. All right. Kim's a great speaker. I don't ever have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. She's got the gift of gab. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so I'm looking to see if there's any other questions. I don't see any more yet. So guys, if you're if you're still with us, I know we, we went over a lot of information. Any mm -hmm. specific questions you have, feel free to drop them in there or you can email us. It's pretty easy. Um, 
we've got some people working in the background. Ashley, if you could put uh, corporate connections at ifma.org in a banner just so folks could capture that, that is going to be the email address where um, you will have you know, individual attention and we'll be able to get back with you. Even if you don't think of something right now, thank you. Ta-da! <laughs> I've got the power. Um, this is the email address and, and we do welcome it. Uh, this, the team that you have at IFMA, our passion is helping people be able to grow their, their career, to grow the profession itself. And we believe very strongly in, in what you will learn and the power of our of our course materials because we see it every day. We talk with people every day and it it does make a difference. And it's really, Brittany, I love being able to say that. Um, it's great when you can support what your organization does and IFMA is an amazing association. Mm -hmm. I think you just did too good of a job, Brittany, because there's, I, just, there's no questions coming in. I was trying to give it a second because, you know, as soon as you cut off the question, somebody's like, oh, I got one. I got one. I mean, hey, that's great. If there's no questions, that means we gave them a lot to think about. Indeed. Oh, here's one that just, we just popped in. Um, there was a question if there is a branch in India. So we do. Yeah, we do have an, oh, arm, of, an arm of IFMA. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will reach out to you directly and get you the contact information for who you need to speak to to get in touch with IFMA India. Yeah, we've got, we actually have an IFMA India regional office mm -hmm. and they're doing just a fantastic job. And so um, Mahender and Basu are there and I know that they would love to get some information to you. So we'll follow up with you. They're very active too with training. They hold quite a few courses. Um, I believe all of the courses they run every year. So consistently they always have something going on. So no matter, no matter what course you're interested in, um, they do in-person instruction. So. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. Okay, well, for those of you that it may be lunchtime, um, we're gonna let you go so you can go enjoy your lunch, go enjoy the rest of your day. Again, if you have any questions, the email address that's shown on the screen, please follow up with us and we'll be happy to answer any questions. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you guys on the training side. Bye. All right, well, wait, wait, actually, oh, Actually, no, we don't have a question, but I do have another job to do. And that is, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate you being interested. Um, we want to help help you take control over the learning opportunities that you have and help you fill any gaps that you may have through the journey in your career within FM. If you have not already done so, if you did not do your homework, please like this video that you're watching now. It does help IFMA reach more FMs like you. And then also you can like and subscribe our YouTube channel, our LinkedIn group. We're all over social media. So we are there wherever, however you want to find us. Make sure you enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest from IFMA. And that, Brittany, is the conclusion. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.